Well, the jury struts are all installed. Got both sides in. Got the fair leads in that go up that forward strut. Well, now we're ready to route that aileron cable. That's something I've been anticipating for a long time. That aileron cable is attached to a link which is attached to the lower portion of the rear of the torque tube, the control stick. And then they come out the side of the fuselage through a pulley. The housing for that pulley is the one that I discovered hadn't been installed when we got the airplane, when they built the airframe. And I kind of had to ruin my powder coating in there to weld in the brackets for that one on both sides. So that wire comes through that pulley and then comes up through these fair leads on the forward strut. There's three fair leads. There's two large ones and then there's one small one right up here near the top. And it goes up around that pulley there that's attached to the front or the rear of the forward strut. And then it goes through the fabric of the wing and goes through another pulley on the other side of the wing, comes out the top of the wing and gets attached to the aileron there. And of course we got the cable that we put in the other day. It comes out the bottom of the wing, that attaches to the bottom of the aileron control horn and it goes through a pulley in the inside the wing there and then follows that spar through and attaches with a link uh, in the middle of the cabin up there. And that's a carry through cable that just goes through and attaches from one aileron to the other. So I don't have all of the nuts and bolts, all the hardware torqued down to the specs yet on the wings. I can go up now and torque down those bolts in the hinges there where the spar is attached to the fuselage. I was going to wait to torque down these ones on the upper spar where they attach to the wing until I get all the aileron cables mounted up and everything. And then the ones on the bottom down there that attach to the fuselage where the spars uh, struts attached to the fuselage there. Uh, those bolts are in and I don't have the nuts for that yet. I talked to Jim yesterday when I called to ask him about rigging the wings and he was going to go over to the Spencer's aircraft and pick up some for me there and he'll bring them up when he comes and we can install them then. That main aileron control cable is routed through there. I just routed it through those fair leads and fed it up through that pulley. It went through just fine. Then I pulled that old cable out a little ways, pulled it out through from the top. I, there's a, a little dome-shaped cover, teardrop cover, that goes over a pulley up there on the top of that wing. I took that off and pulled that cable out a little ways. And then when I got it close, I took some of that red heat shrink tubing, that small heat shrink tubing, and coupled both cables together and fed it through the wing and out the top. Both sides are done. That's not a very big step, but it's a big psychological step. All together getting the struts on and the wings rigged and then running the, getting the jury struts on and, and running those cables through is all together is a pretty good step. So I'm pretty happy with that. Oh boy, now we're cooking with gas. I got the ailerons mounted up, both the right one and the left one up. Pins in them and the cotter pins in them. They're all set. I can finish making up those aileron cables. Hip hip hooray! I'm getting ready to uh, put the nickel press sleeve in my first cable. I've got it all set up, the cable pulled out, I've got the nickel press sleeve on there, everything on, uh, hooked up to the aileron. So I'm just doing a last minute check here. I've got my control stick centered and held down, tied down with the seat belt wrapped around it. I'm just doing a last minute check to make sure I've got it centered. Uh, still going to be some adjustment on it because the turnbuckle there that I'm hooking up to is not completely tight. So we'll have some adjustment on that. I'm not going to be able to get the cable completely tight. But I want to make sure my cable is all run uh, properly now. Make sure it goes over all the pulleys. And make sure it's clear of everything. Not tangled up or anything anywhere. So oh, it comes out of the fuselage there. I'll check and make sure it's on that pulley properly. And then it goes up that strut. And then so far everything looks good, but I'm going to double check it before I uh, crimp that nickel press sleeve. Both main aileron control cables are hooked up. I got the turnbuckles cleaned up, swedged on a nickel press sleeve, and I got those all set up, both of them. 
hopefully I didn't get them too tight. I think there's plenty of take up on them, but uh, supposed to have a maximum of two threads showing on that turnbuckle once you get the cables tightened up to the right tension. I pulled them tight as I could and got them by hand, but there's plenty of slack in those cables, but hopefully they, when they tighten up I've still got the right amount of take up on those turnbuckles. So I started working on that carry through cable. I clamped that link to the carry through member, the forward carry through member in the fuselage. I've got a turnbuckle cleaned up and I've got the cable run through it and through a Nyko press sleeve and it's clamped up there ready to be swedged. So I just got the ladder out and climbed up on top, made sure the cable clears going through the fuel tank bay area and I took the inspection cover off and made sure it's routed properly through that pulley air on that outboard section of the wing. Everything looks good on this one, so I guess uh, go ahead and swedge that Nyquipress sleeve. I got that carry-through cable hooked up on the right wing. That went just fine. I come over here on the left wing and I've got it all set up. And once I got it hooked up there, I went ahead and checked over the line. And I did find a little kink in it up here. I got it straightened out. Now I've tightened, retightened the cable and I've gone over everything again and it all looks good. So it's ready to swedge that. Uh, sleeve. The ailerons are installed. I got those cables made up, got everything attached. I need to put cotter pins in the uh, nuts on those yet. And then of course we need to set the cable tension. We need to adjust the cable tension on them and stuff. The blueprints on there, the instructions on there, showed using an AN23-12 bolt, which is a clevis bolt, to hook those cables up to those control horns. Well, I have AN23-12 bolts and I put them in there and they looked like they were way too long. They called for an AN23-12 with one AN960-10 washer, an AN310 and of course a cotter pin. Well I put those together like that. It looked to me like it was way too long. The unthreaded shank stuck way out past the fork on that control cable. Well I got some AN23-10 bolts and I tried one of those on there and that was just not long enough. Now there's the AN23-12 on the bottom side there and on the left and an AN23-10 on the right so you can see there's quite a bit of difference there. But the AN23-10 bolt stuck through there and it's far enough to get a nut on and stuff but you couldn't have put a washer on there and there were threads still back inside of the fork on the turnbuckle. So you don't want that. You don't. You want the turnbuckle to turn on that bare shank here, not on any threads. So it called for one washer on there, but I put two washers on there instead. I put one underneath the head of the of the screw, uh, the bolt, and I put one on the other end of it. And that is just about perfect. The nut fits on there far enough that that takes up the slop. You don't want these tight. And everything has to pivot on those, and that's the whole point of them is is they pivot on those. So you don't want to crank them down tight, but you don't. I didn't want it sloppy so that it moved back and forth in the in the uh, slot there too, or in the hole there too. So that took up the slop in that. I screwed up on my aileron cables. I was so focused on not getting them too long that I wound up getting them too short. You don't have enough take up on those turnbuckles. Wind up with four or five threads showing on those turnbuckles, and it says the uh, maximum number of threads showing is two. I set those turnbuckles in about halfway when I put them on there and then put them on those control horns, run the wires, the cables through them, and put the Nico press sleeves on, the Nico press sleeves on, clamped them down with my little sizers, and took them down and went ahead and, and uh, squeezed them off and cut them to fit. And they were plenty slack, but as soon as I got them up there and started tightening them up, they just tightened right up. I said I was more worried about getting them too loose than getting them too tight, but they wound up being too tight. I called my mechanic, Jim, this morning. He's going to see if we can figure out something to do with those without having to cut all new cables and stuff and put them in. Well, that's about all I can do with those for the time being. I've got them set to where they should be rigged right now. I was going to go borrow a tent cable tensionometer, check the cable tension on them today, but the guy that I was going to borrow it from was off for a few days, so I didn't think it was that big of a deal anyway because, well, I thought maybe if I could see what the cable tension is on them, I could see how bad it was, but uh, it doesn't really make much difference right now, so that's about all I can do with those. I got some good news today. Well, I called my mechanic and ask him if he thought maybe they might have longer 
terminal ends for those turnbuckles. I didn't hear back from him for a while. Well, I was just getting ready to come out today and take those cables off and remake them, pull those cables out and make new ones to go in. And it wouldn't have been too bad because the main aileron cable runs up along the struts there and down into the belly and then through the wing. Once it was cut off, as I, if I was careful with it, I could have used it for the carry-through cable. And then the ones that are for the carry-through cable, that would have had plenty of cable left there to wire up the water rudders. And so the cables wouldn't have gone to waste. It would just been a big time consumer. So just as I was getting ready to come out here and start that, I got a call from Jim, from the mechanic, to let me know that he talked to parts people and they could get terminal ends, the forked ends there, the clevis ends that hooks on, hook onto the control horn on the elevator. He can get those one inch longer than standard. Well, that'll be plenty to make up the lost difference that I got on those cables being too tight. That would be a big help on those so I don't have to make up new cables. So that was the good news. That'll save a lot of work.